Linux. You may have heard the name in connection with computers a few times. You may have heard of its importance in the electronics community. But what is Linux itself? In short, Linux is what is known as an operating system kernel. Now don't get scared by the name. An operating system is pretty much what it sounds like, a system that operates something. In this case, an operating system is something like Windows or Mac OS X. It is a buffer between the user and the actual nuts and bolts of the machine itself, rather than you having to plug and unplug all of the wires inside your computer to make it do something. The operating system, or OS, does that for you. This is what Linux is, but with a twist. As I said before, Linux is an operating system kernel, which means that in its bare bones form, it is nothing more than a pile of code, over 3 million lines of it in fact, sort of like a lump of unshaped clay. This allows corporations, businesses and developers and the like to shape it into whatever form of operating system they want. They get the kernel and make it into an OS for whatever they need. So with this powerful use in mind, how much do you think Linux costs? The answer is nothing. Linux is an ongoing open source project. It is a collaborative effort by developers around the world, each contributing their code to the kernel to improve its capability. So, how did this all start? The story of Linux begins at the HUT, the Helsinki University of Technology, in 1991. At the time, the Cold War was drawing to a close, cell phones were the size of bricks, and computers were beginning their slow but sure conquest of the world. It was there that a man named Linus Torvalds, a 21-year-old second-year computer science student and self-taught hacker, began work on a new operating system. What was going to be unique about this operating system kernel was that it was going to be free, something not common at the time. The concept of free software had only just started to become popular, thanks to the work of a visionary named Richard Stallman some years before. Richard had created a licensed community for free computer software in the 80s, called the GPL License, with hopes that developers would contribute their code and projects, allowing him to build a thriving community. By 1991, this had started to gain some momentum, but had yet to see the emergence of a full operating system. Richard had begun the construction of his own operating system, known as HERD, but it would be some years before it was ready, and Linus could not wait that long. On August 25th, 1991, a historic post was sent out at the Helsinki University of Technology. Hello everybody out there using Minix, I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby, won't be big and professional like GNU probably never support anything other than AT hard disks, as that's all I have. By mid-September of that year, the first version of the kernel, known as Linux, was released. Linus himself hardly believed that anything would come of his little pet project. Soon, however, developers from all over were gathering enthusiastically around this new OS. The first open source operating system had begun to move forward. In October, the second version was released along with this famous declaration from Linus. Do you pine for the nice days of Minix 1.1, when men were men and wrote their own device drivers? No more all-nighters to get a nifty program working? Then this post might be just for you. By December, version 3 was out, and being sculpted by developers, their numbers growing from hundreds to thousands. Linux was, however, not without opposition. The famous Professor Andrew Tenenbaum, who authored Minix, Dubbed Linux obsolete. I still maintain the point that designing a monolithic kernel in 1991 is a fundamental error. Be thankful you are not my student. You would not get a high grade for such a design. However, this did not discourage the stubborn young programmer. Linus responded, Your job is being a professor and researcher. That's one hell of a good excuse for some of the brain damages of Minix and Linux development continued to gain momentum. Soon, commercial organizations moved in, bringing to bear industrial strength. Linux was no longer just a hacker's toy. So where is Linux today? Well, for the most part, everywhere. Linux is running the world's fastest supercomputers, as well as many network servers, including the ones that power Google, Blogger, Tumblr, Facebook, PayPal, Twitter, YouTube, and many others. Linux is also the base kernel for many phone operating systems, such as Android. You use Linux every day. And Linux will no doubt be around for many years to come.